Hey there. To get a job these days, it seems like you have to be an employer's ideal candidate. You have to have exactly the experience they're looking for, all the certifications they're looking for, the right amount of training, and you have to work probably at well below market value so you could fit within these employers' ridiculously low budgets for all the work they're asking you to do. Another thing that I'm hearing is happening is age discrimination, where if you're too old, say over 50 or over 55, you might not even land a job. You might not even get an interview once they can tell you're of a certain age. And it's really quite disheartening that people with all that experience, all that tenure are not able to land really good jobs in this economy. But I think everybody is struggling, but today I wanna to dive more into the age discrimination issue. I have an article from USA Today and the headline is, Older workers find a less tolerant workplace. Why many say age discrimination abounds. Older workers are everywhere these days. And so it seems is age discrimination. Roughly two thirds of adults over 50 believe older workers face age discrimination in the workplace, according to a new AARP report. Of that group, 90% believe ageism is commonplace. The finding, based on a series of surveys in 2022 and 2023, comes at a time when America's labor pool is conspicuously aging. The 65 and up workforce has quadrupled in size since the mid 1980s. Nearly one quarter of the workforce is 55 or older. And that's one of the first lessons that I learned in corporate America because my very first job, they did all kinds of layoffs and it really was mostly around the people who were a little bit up there in age, who were close to being able to get pensions that still existed back then. And it was really quite sad because it taught me that you cannot be loyal to a company and you sure can't go to a company hoping to be there your entire career and retire because even if you're at the goal line, even if you're just about ret to retire, doesn't mean the company is going to suddenly be loyal to you and you're going to be able to actually retire, get your full pension, all of your benefits, all that kind of good stuff. They're most likely just to kick you to the curb right at the last minute. So I can definitely feel for the people who are over 55 years old who are struggling to get a job because the reality is probably most of them have been laid off because they're about to get a pension or some kind of bonus for reaching a certain level of tenure or their, their salaries just from being there for so long and even from basic cost of living increases is well higher than everybody else and they just want to hack the people who are making these good top level salaries. Either way, there's, I can see how there's a lot of 50 year old plus people on the market, plus people who sadly did not plan well for retirement. Uh, maybe the stocks that they chose didn't do so well. Maybe they thought that they were going to have a little bit more, more money than they do. Maybe they've failed on some rental properties. I mean, there's all kinds of different situations out there, but it's quite sad that people who have served this country, served our economy for so long, are suffering so much to get a job now. Ageism is really one of the last acceptable isms that society tolerates, says Heather Tinsley Fix, a senior advisor at AARP. We're generally speaking of a society that really values youth, not only physically, but in these beliefs that everything good is young. Potential victims of ageism can be tricky to identify, let alone defend. Age discrimination might strike a ball player at 30, an actor at 40, a news anchor at 50, a law partner at 60. For an aging worker, a reversal of fortune can be swift and devastating. Negative evaluations, layoff threats, buyout offers, demotions, pay cuts, and all that comes at the heels of peak earning years in workers' 40s and early 50s. I think we're combating this antiquated idea of when it's appropriate for someone to retire and usher in the next generation, says Mauro Por Porcelli, Senior Director of the Senior Community Service Employment Program of the National Council of Aging. The landscape of the labor market has changed drastically, she said, but our attitudes have not caught up. And that's what I don't understand. These employers don't want to spend too much money on hiring someone or keeping good talent. They don't even want someone 
like in the prime of their career. They apparently these days want someone fresh out of college who will just accept minimum wage, even if it's for a project management job, a director job, an engineer job, it really doesn't matter what the role is. They seem to not want to pay anybody for anything. So yes, it should be the prime making years of your career as far as income goes, but these employers don't want to pay prime income. Like they want to pay bare minimum. They want to pay peanuts. And then it's like they keep pushing back the age that you can retire and get all of your retirement benefits. So it's like, well, I mean, if I need to work maybe sometimes until 72, shouldn't I be able to work until 72, right? If my benefits don't kick in until I'm 65 or 72, I can't just stop working at 50 or 55, right? So what am I supposed to do in between the times and the years of my life that employers are going to stop giving me a good, honest job and the amount of time that the government is going to come in and give me my Social Security money? So there's still a big gap, even if you say it's 10 years between, you know, your last good job that you can get and retirement. I mean, what are you supposed to do for 10 years? People make fun of everyone trying to have financial independence and retire early. But I mean, you might need to retire early <laughs> if you can't get a job, right? I mean, that's why it's so important to try to have some kind of side hustle you can turn into a business or just some kind of straight up business so that you could have money coming in because I'm even kind of afraid of the fact that once I get to a certain age, I might no longer be able to get a job, right? So if I can't figure out something else besides my normal, you know, career in corporate America, I don't know how I might be able to pay the bills when I'm 56 years old. The article goes on to say that episodes of ageism can be subtle. In hiring, it might surface in a job ad that seeks digital natives or an application that asks for a graduation year. In the office, ageism can be a younger colleague laughing off a senior moment or an organizational push to promote the next generation or a gradual reduction of an older worker's duties. You might suddenly start to get carefully sidelined, not asked to participate in more innovative projects. You might find yourself getting subtly cut out of those meetings. An employee who's had a stellar record starts to get mediocre performance reviews where nothing has changed. The new AARP report draws on a series of surveys of over 50 Americans in 2022 and 2023 by AARP in conjunction with NORC, the research organization. Among the findings, one in five older adults said they had personally experienced age discrimination since turning 40. Well, I'm running out of time there. I guess I'm closer to age discrimination than I thought. Roughly one quarter said that they had heard negative comments about older co-workers age. Half of older job seekers said they had been able to provide a birth date on an application, which, yeah, I mean, there's places where you could put your degrees and your, the, the year that you graduated from things, but it's probably definitely not smart to put any sort of, uh, date around when you graduated because then people could figure out how old you are right and I, some people on social media put pictures of them from when they were like 30 35 years old that might be what you have to do on your linkedin so that you don't look as old as maybe you are i mean you might have to do some things you wouldn't normally do but i mean you have to overcome this age discrimination somehow Many older Americans left the workplace at the height of the pandemic, some driven off by layoffs, others opting out over health concerns. Employment dipped by 15% or nearly 6 million workers for people 55 and over in the early months of 2020, according to analysis by the Economic Policy Institute. Many have since returned to the workforce, but not without considerable effort. Older workers tend to stay unemployed longer than younger workers, AARP research found out. Virtual work which exploded during the pandemic, proved a blessing and a curse for older workers, many say. Working from home has been a boom to many older Americans who find themselves liberated from arduous commutes and awkward water cooler exchanges with younger colleagues. Fairness, I'm probably one of your younger colleagues and our water cooler talk's gonna be very awkward. Yet in virtual work, there is more technology involved. And for some older workers, that alone makes them a little more uncomfortable. For older job applicants, ageism can lie a Zoom call away. I think the rise in remote interviewing has harmed older candidates, Tinsley Fix said. If they haven't been thinking of you as an older worker and that camera goes on, a trigger goes off. Here are some tips from ARP and others for older workers to minimize potential ageism in a job application. Number one, less is more. 
Keep your resume on two pages. It should focus on more recent experience. Say the past 10 to 15 years, and while the need to include your credentials, you don't have to include dates in the distant past. We encourage older workers to really focus on their resume on the last 10 years of experience, because that's really the most relevant experience that they're bringing to the table. And don't put your street address at the top. That convention is becoming archaic, ARP says, and exposes you to potential fraud. Ditch that AOL address. I mean, people really have AOL addresses? I don't know. Clinging to an account of an old school email service, no offense, AOL, and Hotmail, <laughs> what about Yahoo? Can tag you as an old person. Get a new one on a comparatively modern service such as Gmail and pick a professional sounding handle that incorporates your name. And lastly, bot proof your resume. Employers use bots to scan resumes and eliminate as many as possible before they reach human hands. To get past the robo gatekeeper, make sure your resume includes keywords specific to your industry. If certain terms pop up again and again in the job listing, put them on your resume. So have you experienced any sort of age discrimination in the hiring process or in the workplace? Because I'd love to hear it down in the comments below. It's just very sad how hard it is for good people to get jobs anymore. I mean, it's just one thing after another that you have to overcome, hurdle after hurdle, and it's really just quite unfortunate. But apparently, along with a lot of isms, age discrimination is something that is still here, it's still a massive problem, and hopefully these people who have dedicated most of their lives and careers to corporate America are able to turn things around and find good incomes to support their family. Talk to you later.